All right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the GRC and Me podcast. I am joined today by my good friend and GRC pundit, Michael Rasmussen. Michael, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here. Awesome. So this is actually going to be a two-part uh, episode, just because there's so many trends that are going on in GRC in 2022. The first one is going to be around agility and resiliency. So why don't we dive right in there, Michael, and, and can you kind of Give us the, the importance of why resiliency is really important to the organizational uh, and organizations risk management programs. Well, from one perspective, I think you would say it's a no brainer right now coming out of the pandemic. Uh, organizations, you know, need to be resilient. You know, resilience is this idea. If you go by the dictionary definition, you know, the elasticity, the ability to spring back, to be able to recover. Um, so resilience is about when we have a negative event, how quickly can we get the processes and services, the organization itself back up and running to recover from the event. That's what resilience and resiliency is about. We have different types of resiliency. We have overall enterprise or business resiliency that's going to look at our strategic resiliency and, and our strategy, our, our capital and the liquidity resiliency and, and, and our finances, but then also our operational resiliency. But then we also can have, look even look at cultural resiliency. But most of the focus today is on this operational resiliency. So when we have operational issues, events, you know, risk issues that rear their ugly head, how quickly can we get back up and running? How quickly can we recover th from those events? Uh, you know, I, the pandemic is just one example that er everybody's having to struggle with with, with resilience. Uh, but moving beyond that, you've got the idea that, uh, um, not the idea, but the, the events and issues like around IT security. That happens quite frequently when you look at the press, from the solar winds example to the Colonial Pipeline to, you know, whatever's happening this month. You know, how quickly can we recover? Now, resilience is more than just traditional business continuity. Uh, resilience requires an integration where business continuity is actually a part of enterprise and operational risk management. Um, I've been saying this for 15, 20 years. I don't understand why we have a risk management group over here, a business continuity group over here, and they never talk to each other. It makes absolutely no sense. Uh, and so all of a sudden now we've got this whole focus on resiliency that, we, you know, this idea of continuity is maturing and becoming part of risk management. In fact, the United States OCC, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, defines operational resilience as an effective, that resilience is an effective outcome of operational risk management. Uh, to be resilient, it's more than just continuity. It's also being able to manage risk and, and, and resilience belongs in risk management. So right now I'm seeing a lot of programs rebranding and relabeling themselves to risk and resiliency, uh, not just uh, risk management within organizations. Yeah, that's interesting. And I think that's a trend that, that we're seeing too, is that you can't have resiliency without the, the risk part of it and the risk management and smashing those. It's not just about the, the traditional BCP and traditional risk management. It's how do those interact and co-mingle and, and uh, relate together? What are You mentioned some of these things. COVID is one of the ones that you mentioned, but some of the trends that we're seeing from a resiliency perspective, some of the things that we need to be resilient around that we saw in 2021 and, and that you think we'll continue to see in 2022. Well, you need to understand the interrelationship of risk. The physicist Friedrich Capra stated, the more we study the major problems of our time, the more we come to realize that they cannot be understood in isolation. They are systemic problems, which means that they're interconnected and interdependent. Uh, the whole idea of risk and resiliency is that there's a lot coming at us and it's an interconnected risk environment. You take COVID-19 as one example, you know, a health and safety risk, and we have to be resilient uh, because of the, the pandemic. Well, this has this downstream impact on all these other risk and resiliency areas. IT security risk in the work from home environment. Look around me. My TV behind me is connected to the internet. My exercise bike is connected to the internet. The speaker in front of me. My blender in my kitchen is connected. I can program with my iPhone. I have no idea why I'd want to program my blender with my iPhone, but I can. <laughs> uh, but uh, if any of these devices has a Trojan horse or back door, it compromises my home office network and data. So we move people to a work from home environment. We have a pandemic risk and resiliency issues there. Then we got IT risks because of that. 
We've got increased risk of fraud because there's economic constraints and there's greater risk that employees might do the wrong thing when they normally would just try to do the good thing. Um, we've got increased risk of bribery and corruption because there's restrictions in uh, uh, customs and you know ports are backed up. There's limited government contracts and permits. There's greater risk that somebody might bribe a foreign government official to expedite their goods through customs. There's re resiliency issues around reputation and brand around modern slavery as in the supply chain, factories go dark. Uh, and all of a sudden, that because, because of the pandemic and the illness, and they reopen with child labor and forced labor, uh, I can go on and on. Conduct issues. We move people to work from home environment. You know, they're wearing their, their nice shirts, you know, on the video, but they might be wearing their, their pajama bottoms, you know, underneath the desk. They're very relaxed. They're not in the corporate office. They're saying things on Zoom calls like this that would never be allowed in the corporate conference room that crosses the line of harassment and discrimination. So when we look at this, it's an interconnected risk environment. And we have to be resilient from multiple angles and themes and see these complex risk relationships. That's the big trend right now is how do we model and see the complexity of risk out there? Because we can't be managing risk in isolation where I'm just looking at IT security risk without thinking about the range of other risks uh, because it is an interconnected risk environment. I, I couldn't agree with you more on that. And the ones that I would hit on are the supply chain. I think that's going to be a huge risk in 2022, the work from home <clears throat> environment, and that's not going away anytime soon, right? And oh, what that, that's even getting worse. Yeah. Uh, I have a whole blog on that. We could do a whole episode just on that, uh, of, of this GRC and me. But uh, uh, you look at the hybrid risk environment, and you've got IT security risks mm -hmm. that I've already mentioned. You've got physical security risks. What documents are being left you know, on, on the uh, desk and themes that roommates and spouse and others can see? Uh, what's being said? You know, I'm on a Zoom call in my home, in my apartment right now. You know, what, what can be heard by other people in the apartment? Well, what sensitive company information is being linked? Customer, client, private information is being overheard that shouldn't be overheard. You go to the local coffee shop in this new hybrid environment. And, and you, you, you look around and people are having all these business meetings and working on laptops there and exposing all sorts of information. Uh, then you have issues of moonlighting. You know, people are working oh, from yeah. home and they're mo working multiple <clears throat> jobs. And there's actually been one case where somebody's actually outsourced their job to somebody overseas and is collecting the paycheck and paying them a fraction of it. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of risks in this hybrid risk environment that we need to, uh, I, we're, I'm going to diatribe. That could be a whole nother episode. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the other big one too out there is, and it's been, you know, this this year has been kind of coined as the great resignation, right? There's, I think, so much risk in just work workforce management and to be able to attract and retain amazing talent so that organizations can execute on their strategic roadmap, right? And there's a big, big, big risk from uh, an organization perspective there. So what there's are the common you know, you, you've said that, hey, resiliency has been around for a while now. What are the common threads that you've seen between companies that have really strong cultures of resiliency? Um, well, for one aspect, it, it, it's being able to see across departments, a good collaboration and being able to get multiple perspectives uh, from different department views, because to be resilient, it's not just one organization. It, it's like the human body. The organization is like a body. When you look at the human body, you've got the uh, skeletal system, the muscular system, the circulatory system, the digestive system, the endocrine system, the nervous system. Each of those make the body. Uh, within the organization, all these different departments and functions make the organization. You can't just diagnose and look at just one system. You've got to look at the whole. And that's the big thing that we're seeing right now with resiliency is it, it can't be just focused on one department. That's where a lot of times business continuity and disaster recovery in the, uh, has failed us in the past because it was seen as an IT security issue buried in the bowels of the IT department and not truly a broader operational risk issue. Uh, and so it, it's being able to see across these areas and be able to um, work collaboratively together. That's a key theme. Um, uh, another one, which I think was one of the next things we're going to talk about is the idea of agility uh, to be able to navigate to avoid issues as well. But, but I'll, I'll pause and talking about that till we get there. Yeah, that is an absolutely amazing tee up. And I think that, you know, both of us believe that best in class companies really have very, very, very strong resiliency in them and, and cultures of resiliency. But it's kind of that next step that I want to talk about now. And it's 
you know, how to, before um, resiliency, being able to understand and adapt before we have big problems happening and we need to put that resiliency in place. And the answer there is, like we were talking about, is agility. So why is agility really important to organizations, risk management programs, and, and actually how does agility relate to resiliency? Well, there's a symbiotic relationship. It's like a yin and yang thing. Um, resiliency is this ability to recover from a risk event, you know, spring back, get, get the organization running again. Um, agility is the ability to navigate the environment to even prevent events. Uh, if you take the, an analogy of running, if I'm running along and I trip, I'm falling on my face, how quickly can I get back up and start running again? That's resiliency. Agility is the ability to be able to see us, to see a, 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 as I'm running, and to see that obstacle I was going to trip over and to avoid it, to leap over it or go around it. You know, that's the idea of agility. Now, we need both because there are risk events that are going to happen. So we need to be a resilient organization, but it's better to be an agile organization to even avoid those risk events. Now, I've looked at a lot of the definitions of operational resilience around the world. The United Kingdoms at the FCA, Bank of England, and PRA Operational Resilience Regulation, the EU DORA, Digital Operational Resilience Act, uh, the U.S. Bank for National Settlements in Basel Guidance and Operational Resilience, and the U.S. OCC Guidance and Operational Resilience. Uh, the one I like the most is the, is the United Kingdom's definition, because it's the only one out of those four that talks about agility, not just resilience. In the definition in the UK regulation, it talks about the ability to prevent and avoid events, not just recover from events. All the others talk about recovery from event. Mm -hmm. It's the United Kingdom's that talks about, that brings in this idea of agility with resiliency, the ability to prevent and avoid events as well. What are on that exact topic, and then what are some of the trends from an agility perspective that we're seeing in the GRC market, you know, this year? And what do you think that we'll see into 2022? Well, it's to get out and look at what's happening in the world around us immediately, but also in the future. It involves things like horizon scanning for risk trends, horizon scanning for regulatory trends, uh, monitoring geopolitical risk and developments that can impact the supply chain and things like that. There's a <laughs> lot of horizon scanning and monitoring of the environment to know what's coming at us and how we can react. The other key trend and aspect, and this is something you and I've discussed before, but is the need to move beyond just logical risk thinking, left brain risk thinking. That's still important. We need our quantitative risk models and things like that. But And, and that's what risk management's been focused on in the past is building out risk models and scenarios and things like that. And that's still extremely important. We need that. We need left brain thinking on risk, that logical and structured thinking on risk. But to add to that, we need the creative right brain thinking on risk, thinking outside the box. Where are these models broken? Where are they weak? You know, a model can never accurately represent the, the real world because it's, it's the real world's too complex. There's too many variables around us to be able to represent in a model. So models, you know, are never precise. Uh, the best they can be is somewhat accurate. And so we need the good right brain thinking of, you know, how can our models be improved? What, what are these models not telling us? What can, how can risk happen that we haven't really forecasted, foretold, or seen? So good agility is going to bring together our traditional left brain thinking of risk with our risk models and quantified risk analytics and our different scenario modeling with right brain risk thinking outside the box. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. And I think the big thing too is even you touched on this is how do we bring all of this together, right? How do we bring things like IT and cyber risk management with vendor risk management, with compliance and regulatory risk management, with HR risk management, like we were just talking with the work from home environment into one succinct uh, platform so you can get a holistic view of what the risk profile looks like for the organization and then apply some quantitative uh, analysis and modeling over top of it. So I think we've got time for one last question here. And really, I want to kind of take it up one level and, and say, you know, from a resiliency perspective in this concept of resiliency and this concept of agility, how does that resonate with the board within organizations, right? What trends are we seeing there? And, and how does agility really manifest itself from an executive and a board level conversations? So to me, the idea of agility really rings well with the board because the, the traditional resilience approach to risk, that's tactical, that's recovery. Um, the idea of agility is strategic because it, it can align with their strategic plan. How are we thinking? How are we planning? How are we budgeting? Um, what are the objectives of the organization? And, and the idea of agility is allowing us to really take a risk view of that, those areas, to look at the uncertainty on objectives. ISO 31000 tells us by definition that risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. 
So as the board and various governance bodies set those objectives for the organization, agility allows us to look at the risks to those objectives and the uncertainty and what we can do about that. So it's much more strategic thinking. Yeah, I, I could not agree with you more on that point. Well, Michael, I appreciate you being here on GRC and me and talking to us and all the listeners today about resiliency and agility and, and those trends that we'll see uh, in 2022 and beyond. So thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Mm-hmm.